Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask you, just give us a description of the belief. <clears throat> And give, if you can, give some verses or some reasons to support why it's a valid belief, why it's possible. Just do your best. We're not, you know, we're not grading you or anything. We're just trying to help each other understand it, okay? And um, so let's do it. Steve, you ready? Come on. You want to, you want to pulp it? No, just kidding. <laughs> All right, so Steve is going to talk about universalism. Awesome. The term universalism was used in the 1820s by Russell Starter of the Christian Intelligator of Portland, a descendant of Adam Starter, who had founded one of the first universalism churches on September 14, 1785, Christian Universalism believed of Christianity and early Christianity pearl to the 6th century Christians from the diversity of dominations and trend, trendings believed in the tense of Christian Universalism such as the reality of an afterlife without the possibility of internal punishment in hell. Christian universalism disagree on whether or not hell exists. However, they do agree that if it does, the pun punishment there is corruptive and remodel and does not last forever. The verses I chose for this were Revelation 2014, and it says, Then death and heads were thrown into the luke of fire. This is the second death, the luke of fire. And the second one is Revelation 2010. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the luke of fire, and suffer were the beast and the false prophets were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And then the third one was Romans 8, 38 through 39, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor the present, nor the future, nor any power, neither height or death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to support us separate. separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. And the last verse is Luke 3, 6, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. And then my uh, quotes were why do universals, universalists say punishment is captive and remodel and does not last forever? If Revelation 20.10 is said, they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. My second one is Christian universal beliefs such as the reality of an afterlife without possibility of eternal punishment and hell. And the last one is, if Revelation says, then death and hell were thrown into the look of fire, this is the second death, the look of fire, then shouldn't their punishment last forever? And that's what I got. Pretty good, Steve. Well, you want to hold on a bit? Maybe somebody has some questions. Anybody have questions about universalism? Nice work, by the way. Um, why do a lot of famous people believe in it? Because uh, <coughs> they they uh, have a I guess they have their church that they say that the punishment lasts forever. Why would there be two loops of fire in one place? 
Um, could you could you put it in your own words? What is universalism? Universalism is when someone believes that the punishment in hell doesn't last forever. So you just die. You, you just die, and then that's it. Okay. So awesome job, by the way. Thank you, Steve. I, who knew, man, you could do so much research, man. Um, I got this from the Univer Christian Universalist Association. So there's actually a big association. There's one guy you might heard of, name is Rob Bell. And he's believed to be a big proponent of it. I was watching some videos and he kind of denies it. But here's what they say. It says, we believe in universal salvation. The idea that there is no such thing as eternal hell or annihilation because God has planned the universe to produce positive outcome for all people of all times. Um, so, let me see what else it says. So really what it is is that everybody goes to heaven. No matter what religion, no matter what you did, eventually the way God reconciles the world is that everybody goes to heaven. And that, so universalism is, is you know, e universe, everything. Everything ultimately goes. So hell is empty, heaven is full. Universalism. All right, so that's that belief. And Steve gave some verses for it. You know, he read in Romans 8, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. No height, no depth, no demon, no nothing. And then uh, a few others in Revelations that everything's thrown in the lake of fire. So, um, so, that's universalism, and that's one way of looking at it. And there's verses to make you wonder, like, whoa, wait a minute here. And there's there's some more, but you know that's a good start. Um, thank you, Steve. So honestly, these are my best work, guys. So okay, so I had reincarnation. So I just a belief of reincarnation. Reincarnation is also transgender. You can't speak about that in a religion and philosophy, rebirth of the aspect of an individual that persists after, after bodily death, whether it be consciousness, mind, soul, or some other entity, in one or more six, six, oh, six, six, oh my gosh, depending on the tradition, these existences may be human, animal, spiritual, or in some instances, vegetables. Mm -hmm. Uh, how is it that your next life is chosen? With different religions believing in reincarnation, they all hold the doctrine of karma, the law of the cause and effect, which states that what one does in the present life will have its effect in the next life, which results in endless cycle until the soul is at peace slash a state of in nirvana. Okay, so uh, I think Robert on the piece of paper that he gave us said that they do not believe in hell, or they do not believe in the existence of hell, or something like that, but in some of the, oh, I should probably, there you go, in some of the religions, like Hinduism, Buddhism, I don't know how to say that, Sikhism, Sikhism, Jainism, ancient Greeks believed it, some of them did, like Plato, which I think you guys all know, philosopher, yeah, okay, so, either ways, oh, no, no, go back, go back, go back. So you said some actually do believe Some in them. do believe in them. Hold on. Okay, so this is like, I think, yeah, Buddhism's mm -hmm. little circle of being a genie. And it depends on how good you are, because, I mean, depending on the life that you get, you can have, like, good karma and be a good person. But if, obviously, you're evil, then they do have this, like, demon realm where you, like, are a demon for a life. And then you could be, like, a goddess for a life. So I mean, that's <laughs> it's very complicated, and I don't want to like confuse y'all because I was confused. Okay, so some there's like one Bible verse that people believe in that like proves re reincarnation is real. Let me look for it. it's John three three. Let me look for a book. <clears throat> Do you want us to look at the next one? Go for it. John 3 frames. Okay, so the verse says, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, that's what they say, people who believe in reincarnation, but as we know, he wasn't speaking about 
going into a different body, but like a rebirth by like baptism, you know? The spirit is being reborn, not in the way they believe in it. And then Kim, the like Kim has that one. Kimmy, if you want to read Hebrew nine seven. But only the high priest went into the second oh. Go cook in your but only the highest priest went into the second part once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the sins of the people committed in ignorance. Committed in ignorance. Okay, that's not the first one. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Well, it's somewhere in Hebrew. It says that when a man dies, he, his soul goes up to heaven or something like that. I don't know. But it points out that you can't, your soul can't transfer into something else that it's just... Like God collects it. Like it's not just there. Because they believe that once, so say like I were to die in a hospital, they say like my soul stays there. Like even if my body isn't there, my soul stays in that hospital for like a couple of, for a, for a specific time. And then like say a baby is born, and I hop into that baby as my soul. Because <laughs> yeah, that's, or I can hop into like a pregnant woman's belly and then there, there's my consciousness, yeah. It's very complicated. It makes kind of no sense, but that's our presentation. Thank you, Adam. Any, all right. Anybody have any questions for Eileen? No. Yeah. All right. So what, so are those, the people you listed there on the on the different religions, are those the only ones who believe in reincarnation? Hinduism, uh, Buddhism? For like the ones that, yeah, like that's in their doctrine, like they believe that, especially like, Buddhism, because that was like, or Hinduism, I don't know, the one that has the con, what is it, constant, constant, the like, constants, what? Constants, like, I don't know. Your comment. What? What's the comment? So you said like, when you die, say you were to die in the hospital, Yeah. you go into something else. Yeah. But. Well, depending but, on like, the life that I, the life that I live, so okay, if. Okay, that's, that's what I was getting, yeah. so, so like, at first you said that it was like a karma thing. So you don't get to choose, obviously. Yeah, obviously. I shouldn't okay. have said that. Okay, yeah, so I don't get to choose, so it's more like if I was, like, a really bad person, then I would be something, as they said, something like a, like a wild animal, or, um, like a ghost, I think, on the little... Even a rat. Yeah, like... The, I guess you wouldn't, never mind. But yeah. there's no certain wish she would come back in, she would just know that it'd be something. Yeah, yeah because... But, would you know... So that's the thing. They have like a theory of where they think that if you pass on to another life, like you kind of show it, but you like as a con like you're consciously don't un you are know. unaware because there's like cases where this little boy who was I think two and he was like in love with airplanes and he knew a lot of like information about airplanes and it like people thought that his past life was like. Um, they like took a they took a picture of him and then they like did like this whole psychology thing on him and then they found they thought that they found like his other his past life was like an air force in like world war 1 or 2 i forget but there is definitely cases where people are like oh in my past life i i think i had this from my past life so yeah mm, past life i had six <laughs> so, you guys should check it out, but so I don't it, think it's, it's legit. Pretty it's pretty common nowadays, right? Yeah. They said 25% of Christians believe it. Wow. 25% of like American Christians believe it. Yeah. So. I, I hear it, even in just in mainstream, everybody <laughs> talks about it, karma, reincarnation. Mm -hmm. I talked to a girl who was an atheist this week, and she believed in reincarnation. So, so would, would you would you say like karma isn't real? I know it's like the science. Well, say what karma is is that you kind of get what you deserve, right? You, and so it's all based on works. How good you are determines your future. Right, and a lot of people yeah. like it because it has, like, it's like you're in control of your own fate. Like God doesn't get to decide. Oh, he's been a good person. Like he'll go to heaven or something. Like you get to decide. You're in control. If you want. If you want to be a good person, then you know that you're going to get, like, you're going to reap the benefits in ne your next life instead of, like, going to hell and being decisive, right? All of that. All right. So who who's ever made it to Nirvana? Is anyone ever? They said the guy. No. What's Dalai his name? Lama? No. What's his name? He was like. Buddha. 
The tongue. Buddha. Buddha. Buddha did it. Buddha. He had a C. It was a C name. Like con con con. Con no, no, no. no. Yeah, I know. You, I I know the name. Um, I I heard that. Like God. I heard they believed that Jesus was the first one to reach in reincarnation. Um, yeah, I was kind of weird because he came back, uh, and they said, I don't know if you mentioned this, but you can. You hell, at least what I what I what I thought is that hell is not maybe not an option. It could be because you get reborn. Every time you die, you come back as something else, depending on how you... And this could go on for... Yeah, it's an endless cycle. Until, until you reach Nirvana. Nirvana. And who's reached it? You know, that's the thing. They said Jesus. That's how they get rid of the Jesus option, is that he's the only one, or he's one who's maybe the first who's reached Nirvana. But again, there's really no way to prove any of it, uh, other than, like you said, the kid knew a lot about airplanes, oh, he must have been. Right, there's certain cases where they have people that are, like, in my past life, and they know actually a lot, but it's like, where's the... Right. <laughs> okay. Pretty cool. Thank That's you. Alright, so I got Thanatology, and basically the whole thing about it is a scientific study of death. Um, it's based on case studies of people who have died and come back to life. Um, so, that is basically the whole description that I can get for it. Um, so, I found so, most of my research was in the Bible because I got verses to support of, how, of why people believe in the than, anthology. And the first one was in Luke chapter 8, verse 52. Give me one second. Chapter what to me? Um, chapter 8, verse 52. Let me know if you want me to look at any verses up there. Can you look up John 11, 38? Can you stop it? Oh, let's read it. Okay, if you have it, can you read it? Uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 52. Now all wept and mourned for her, but he said, Do not weep, she is not dead, but sleeping. Okay, yes, I can't find Okay, so that story is about, um, I can't, J, how, how do you say that name? Jairus? Jairus? I think it says there, before it, it says the name. Does it say? Okay, never mind, I found it. Jairus? Jairus, okay, yes. That one, so that one story is about Jairus' daughter. Um, so if we look up real quick in verse 49, um, Okay, so it was while while he was still speaking, someone from the synagogue ruler's house came, saying to Jairus, "Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher." So that's when Jesus was walking by, and um, they wanted him to go over to the daughter to so Jesus, because they knew Jesus had power, and and they believed in him, so he wanted Jesus to heal her, but um, but he told them like, "Don't bother, because she's already dead." I was verse, the verse verse already that she's already dead but when Jesus went over um, it says um, then in verse 48 uh, hold on give me one second um, okay so in verse 50 it says but, Je but when Jesus heard of it he answered him do not fear only believe and she will be made well and then on verse 52 it says um, do not weep she is not dead but sleeping so people, when they experienced that she died, but when Jesus went over, he told them like, don't, like, don't lose faith that she is, um, she is only sleeping. So we can see that if people saw that she died, but he <coughs> said she's only sleeping. So technically, you know, she kind of, Jesus raised her up from the dead. Um, and then the next story that we all know of is, um, of Lazarus, the story of Lazarus. Can you read that one, Robert? What you say it was, John what? John eleven thirty-eight. Okay. Um, Can you read thirty-eight to forty-four, please? I stayed outside the village at the place where Martha met him. When the people saw, when the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave as hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus' grave to weep. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, "Lord, if you only had been there, my brother would not have died." And when Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him, and he was deeply troubled. 
Where have you put him? He asked them. And they told him, Lord, come and see. Keep going, or? What verse are you? 34. No, 11, 30, 39 to, to 44? 39? Yeah. Right, here we go. Uh, Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell would be terrible. Jesus responded, Didn't I tell you that you would see the glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, as his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a head cloth. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Thank you. Okay, so we saw um, in verse... Uh, 39 it says that he has been dead for four days so I mean if we were experiencing something like that we're like hey that's impossible but uh, when Jesus was there um, he proved another miracle there that then it says um, he, in verse 43 he says Lazarus come out and so I mean for them to believe something like that they knew or when people read the Bible they knew that Jesus had power and he can raise people from the dead just as he also raised from the dead and um, we're going to go just to one more because uh, I got like five stories, but I'm only going to read three of them. So this third one is going to be in Acts chapter 20, verse 7. Um, okay, so this story is about when Paul was on his way to throw us, throw us, throw ass. Okay, and then um, basically well, just a summary is when... Um, he was gonna he was gonna do like a sermon for it says for quite some time um, actually it says and he continued his message until midnight so Paul was giving a message for quite a few hours but there was this one guy that he was on top of the third floor and he sat next to the window but I mean as Paul was giving his message he kind of fell asleep on him and so he fell from the third floor all the way down and then everybody said like oh he's dead when they saw him like He's there. There's no life in him after all. After that fall, and then in verse 10, it says, um, Paul went down and leaned over him and embraced him and said, Do not be troubled, for he is alive. So, also, um, I guess we can say that God gave Paul, or he told him, like, to tell his people, don't be afraid, because he is surely still alive, even after that. And then, um, those are just the three verses, I mean, the three stories I want to read. And, um, just my thoughts on it was, I feel like it's different from when people, people, we have heard stories when people say they raised from the dead, like, in this time right now, but I feel like it's different because back then, Jesus was the one who was walking on earth, and here it just only us, but we have God's Spirit with us. Um, and also... And I feel like when people die, how they say, oh, I was dead for like two minutes. But I feel like it's just like, kind of like the H Hades part is where I feel like they're probably in a stage where they're going to go a little further. But I, they say they <laughs> they came back to life because they say they just, they go from death for like two minutes and they come back to life. So I feel like it's just the part where they would have went a little bit more, but God told them not to and then <laughs> they came back to life so just something like that so that is thank it you. thank you anybody have any questions nobody nobody we're good <laughs> what, so what if you could put it in your own words what is what is thanatology or what does it have to do with hell okay um <laughs> that's a hard question <laughs> well, i'm curious um <laughs> For me, I'd probably um, say that, I guess if people don't, if they live their life and they don't believe in God, they either, I guess, we send ourselves, whether we choose to go with God or we go with hell, in hell. And so just depending the way you live your life. And I don't know, if God gives you a second chance, maybe it's for you to become a better person or change your own ways. And so, I don't know, it could be a sign of something. Yeah, so. I mean, you guys have seen the movies, right? All the, um, well, no, I don't know if there's movies, but there's people who've done big, 
you wrote books on it. Yeah. Twenty minutes in hell or seven minutes in yeah, hell. Yeah, something stuff like, like that, that. So. And they come back with stories. So the thanatology is the study of people who have died and come back to life, and trying to gather information about the afterlife by studying these people. Well, some say that they just where they were at. It was just something dark. Black hole. Yeah, just all cold or just something dark, and some people say they saw stars, but it was like in a distance, and they see some people see a light, but that's they don't really explain much anything, but just that. Isn't there a movie that just came out where? Mm -hmm. What is it? Like, stop them. They like, they get one shame on them and they yep. stop their heart. Oh, yeah. Oh, that one Juno girl. When yeah. they go yeah. from the right. Yeah. Yeah. I want to watch that. Heartbeat, no. Mm -hmm. No, Frontline. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. 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 Cool. All right. Thank you, Kim. All right. Mine is Eternal Hell. And that is the most common one that people have a problem with, which brings up all these other theologies of why people don't want to believe in it because they think that. How could God be so loving and gracious but send people to hell to um, be tortured there? And the, uh, um, yeah, the main argument people have is how can God be so loving but send people to hell? And there's a verse in 1 John 4, 8 through 10. It says, The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this, by this love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through Him. And this, and this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son. Um, but the... It's pretty simple to believe in it. It's God gives you a choice to either follow Him or pay the consequences. He's loving, He's merciful, He's gracious, but He's also just. And um, Matthew 25:46, um, it clearly states, "These these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life." And 2 Thessalonians 1.9 These will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and the glory of His power. A lot of people don't want to believe in this because they think it's too harsh of God to punish them this much for eternity. But it's, it's, um, it's the price you have to pay. You either to follow Him or to not follow Him. It's pretty simple, even though you don't want it to believe it, but it's, it's right. And uh, God gives you the option. He's not going to, if all these other ones say you're not going to go to hell, but it's pointless if you're not going to go. There's no point in living or trying to do anything good because you're not going to pay any consequences to it. And that's pretty much it. So in, in your eternal, your, your view, the description of hell, at least the one you were presenting, hell is eternal. Yes. Conscious. It's your body dies, but your soul's still alive. And All right. Questions, anybody? No None? No questions. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you. Well done, everyone. All right, let me just give a quick recap. And then, so next week, we'll go in this order. Uh, David, Karima, Guillermo, and Elmer. So he was supposed to be in the middle, but hey, if you want to switch with one of them, don't matter to me, as long as you do it. Um, so next week, you guys can go. Um, but let's just do a little recap. All right, so we started out with Steve. And Steve, you presented on what? Universalism. Universalism. What is universalism? Anybody besides Steve? Everybody goes to heaven. All right? There, there's, uh, hell is empty. Heaven's full. God's plan all along was to, no matter what, he's going to 
he's going to somehow reconcile the world to himself. Um, that's universalism, that it's all going to work out. God designed this to work. And the next one was Eileen, and she talked about... What did she talk about? Anybody? Reincarnation. Reincarnation. So that reincarnation is... Julia? Reincarnation. You don't know? No. You know. What is it? Sorry, I only know You die and like, you come you back. Come back. You come right. Back. You come back. You and you can die and come back until you reach a certain point. Yeah, your, your goal is to reach nirvana. So every time you come back, you're trying to do better than you did the last time. And this can go on for who knows how long. And that's why it's believed that may, you know, hell, hell can exist, but maybe it doesn't because you don't go anywhere. You just keep coming back until you go up. You don't ever die and go forever. You know? So it's a little different. Yeah. All right, so uh, the way I, you know, Eileen said it's deep. There's, a lot of, there's also different beliefs within it, just like anything. There's different sects of it. All right, so that was reincarnation. Then we had... Kimberly Thanatology, that's a study of people who have died and come back to life. I mean, wouldn't it be awesome to hear Lazarus' story four days? What the heck happened? Where were you, you know? Oh, that'd be crazy. Um, but, yeah, we, we don't know. We don't know. I mean, you hear stories, we read stories. And I've become a little skeptical now of some of the stories I read uh, just because of reading the scriptures. Um, and then the last one, Josiah, about eternal eternal damnation that okay either either everybody goes to heaven either you're reincarnated and there's no you don't go to hell either that you die and there's different you just see a black hole and you're in um, you know there's different things that may occur uh, or you go to hell for eternity or it's a real place and you actually go once you die and then we have a few more that we'll get to next week that are even a little more confusing. We're going to talk about purgatory. We're going to talk about annihilation. We're going to talk about humanism and alternate world. So, there's different views on hell. But we're trying to figure out which one's right. And the question is, if hell is real, is God still good? Because that's the big one. That's the big one. Um, and I just want to read you some questions. I don't know what time is it. What time is it? 1053. All right. So we remember at the beginning we wrote down a whole bunch of questions that people had. Is hell just abandonment from God? Does hell really exist? Where is hell located? What's the size of hell? Are there different realms? Is hell ice or fire? We'll answer those as we go. But let's finish next week with these guys and then we'll talk a little bit more about it and continue going because we're, we're shooting for the goal to finish it, to figure it out. So, thank you guys. Impressive work. Nice. You made me like, ooh, man, I need some work. So, um, next week.